This is the 5 minute guide to the USS Enterprise, a Yorktown class aircraft carrier of the United States Navy. USS Enterprise, CV6, the Big E, the Grey Ghost, 7th of her name. With 20 battle stars to her credit, she was the most decorated American ship of World War II and the first American ship to sink an enemy vessel in the Pacific. She was also simultaneously one of the luckiest and occasionally one of the unluckiest ships to ever fly the Stars and Stripes. This is her story. As the second Yorktown class carrier ordered, the Enterprise launched in 1936 and commissioned in 1938, spending the first year of her operational life in the Atlantic Fleet before transferring to the Pacific Fleet in 1939, where she received one of America's first radar sets. She trained extensively but was also used as something of an aircraft ferry, which saved her from destruction in December 1941 as she was returning from delivering Marine Corps fighters to Wake Island when the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, arriving the next day with the entire crew pitching in to refuel and rearm the carrier. So she was back at sea by the 9th and sank the submarine I-70 on the 10th of December. After a number of covering actions, her first major combat mission was as part of Task Force 8 in February 1942, raiding the Marshall Islands, the now captured Wake Island, and escorting her younger sister Hornet on the Doolittle Raid, receiving minor damage from a Japanese counterattack in the first of these missions. She missed the Battle of the Coral Sea by a couple of days, but was accompanied by both Hornet and Yorktown to the Battle of Midway, where her torpedo bomber squadrons were in action first. But the Devastator torpedo bomber was perhaps the most singularly unsuited aircraft to bear that name, and the attackers were almost wiped out. However, the dive bombers did not much better, knocking out the Karga and Akagi alongside Hornet's own aircraft, and later joining survivors from the Yorktown in taking out the Hiryu. To cap it all off, her dive bombers sank the cruiser Mikuma toward the end of the battle. Although Yorktown was lost, the Enterprise was undamaged, so, so far so good. Her next major action was the Battle of the Eastern Solomons, where although the light carrier Rugio was sunk, the Enterprise suffered three bomb hits and four near misses, which caused serious damage, although good work by the damage control parties meant that she managed to make it home under her own steam. After repairs, she headed back out alongside the Hornet to take part in the Battle of the Santa Cruz Islands, and was promptly hit twice more, whilst Hornet was sunk, although her aircraft hit a number of carriers and cruisers. With the loss of the Hornet, the ship was the last remaining Yorktown-class carrier and the last operational American carrier at all in the Pacific, although it still was quite badly damaged. This did not, however, seem to overly concern her crew, who simply posted a sign on the ship stating that the war was now Enterprise versus Japan, so no pressure there. She put into port for repairs, but another Japanese attack meant that she had to sail with repair workers still on board patching up the ship as she threw her squadrons into the Battle of Guadalcanal. By the time it was all over and the smoke had cleared, her squadrons had had a share in the destruction of 16 ships, including the battleship Hai, the first Japanese battleship lost in action during the war, and the damaging of eight more. I wonder how the captains of those ships felt knowing that their ships had been sunk by effectively a cripple. With that done, she then went back to complete her repairs, and then after some further covering operations, she was sent in summer 1943 for a much needed refit, as the Essex-class fleet carriers were beginning to come online. Returning to action in November 1943, she introduced further new firsts to the US Navy, launching night fighters and conducting night bombing attacks with her torpedo bombers as she operated off the Marshall Islands, followed by covering and attack missions against numerous enemy-held islands, including Saipan, Palau, and Guam. In the course of this, she took part in the Battle of the Philippine Sea, which saw six American ships damaged in exchange for three Japanese carriers sunk. She then went on to hit multiple battleships and destroyers in the Battle of Leyte Gulf, before a tour of various Japanese bases as the only American carrier capable of nighttime operations. This included attacks on the Japanese home islands, and a role in the Battle of Iwo Jima, as well as the invasion of Okinawa, where she took bomb and kamikaze damage. She was gearing up to head back out after repairs in the USA when the war ended. As with many American warships, she was called into action as part of Operation Magic Carpet, taking troops back from both the Pacific and European theatres, her fame meriting the award of a British Admiralty pennant on her visit to Southampton. Her return tri trip saw her take new damage from a series of bad storms, which seems to be something of a nemesis for World War II-era American carriers. 
With the troops transported back home and Essex-class carriers so numerous you could find one almost by tripping over a rock, the ship was deemed surplus to requirements and decommissioned in 1947. Initially, it was planned for the state of New York to preserve her as a memorial, but this and other efforts to preserve her failed due to lack of funding, and eventually in a travesty similar to the scrapping of HMS Warspite, the United States Navy's most decorated ship was very unfortunately scrapped in 1958. The legacy of the ship lived on, though. Almost immediately after CV-6 went to the scrapyard, CVN-65, the world's first nuclear-powered aircraft carrier, was commissioned as the new USS Enterprise. And after that ship being taken out of service in 2012, it was announced that the new CVN-80 will take up the name in the next decade once she finishes construction. And, of course, we all know the name will continue into the future when the Constitution, Excelsior, Ambassador, Galaxy and Sovereign-class starships are launched. But that's a story for another day. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below.